Hey guys, uh, Jordan Mariello with Critical Start here, Senior Vice President of Managed Services. Today I have with me uh, Michael Balboni, uh, President of Redland Strategies, a former Senator, Assemblyman, and Advisor to uh, Homeland Security. Um, honored to have him here with us today. We've been doing some uh, awesome discussions about things that we're doing at Critical Start and working with Redland Strategies, but uh, today we wanted to take an opportunity uh, just uh, to talk to Michael about some general cybersecurity issues. He's a major influencer in our community. I know many of you already know who he is um, and has had a major impact even on some of the legislature that we've seen around our industry too as well. So we wanted to take a time to get some uh, thoughts from him on some of the direction the industry's going and the impact that some of the changes we see in cyber in general are having on national defense and, and the role of Senate and Congress and, and where that's going from a legislature perspective too. So we're gonna open up and have a nice fun conversation here about some of these issues. So thank you so much for being with us, Michael. Thanks for having me, Jordan. And thanks for your service to the country right. and the military. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your support. So one of the things that I was really interested to talk to you about today and get your thoughts on um, specifically was that, what role do you see Senate and Congress playing in cybersecurity here in the future? Obviously, I think you were a big proponent of even some of the involvement, the debate that happened over the last couple uh, administrations. Um, how do you see some of that playing out here in the future? As you know, ever since the, the Bush administration after the 9-11 attacks, there was a focus on cybersecurity. And as the threats began to evolve, you know, 2004, 2005, there were, there were changes to you know, in the way we did intelligence or changes on the outskirts of the cybersecurity. And what happens is that every time there's a bill that the Congress or the Senate puts forward to try to set up goals for what cybersecurity, cyber uh, resiliency, cyber compliance should look like, the, uh, they would always be shot down. And a lot of times it was uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce that would come in and sit there and say, you know what? We don't think that changing the rules by which people play is going to be an effective strategy because the rules change as the threat changes, as the landscape, as the IT develops and evolves. And so what's happened is the administrations, whether it's Bush, Obama, you know, uh, uh, Trump, well, they've all come back and they've said, let's do it by presidential directive. And so uh, it actually morphed into Obama, the Homeland Security uh, Privilege, I'm uh, sorry, um, uh, cyber uh, resiliency, which I think was the first way they started. And they had a presidential directive that basically set up a guideline. <clears throat> now, what's also happened is that the regulatory agencies, uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the uh, you know, uh, CMS, the Office for, for, for Privacy, and the Home, uh, Health and Human Services, they've come out with very uh, rigid guidelines as to how do you protect personally identifiable uh, data, how you protect uh, patient health information. And so they've set up all these requirements that really follow the National Institute of Standards and Technology standards that a lot of people sit there and say, okay, this is what we ought to be doing, uh, but they're more advisory at this point in time yeah. than actually you have to comply with them. So we've kind of seen the goalposts of what constitutes a cyber secure society move as different players get involved, different industries are regulated. And so if you went to the Library of Congress and you went and you, you grabbed into the shelf and you wanted the book on cybersecurity in, this, in the United States, you wouldn't find it. You know, there's right. all sorts of different rules and regulations and therefore you have a different kind of compliance uh, bandwidth on that. So, uh, Congress and the Senate <clears throat> are trying to wrestle with this all the time. They know the, the threats and the huge issues as it plays to the local government. But then there's this, this big issue that you and I have talked about. What is the role of government in protecting cybersecurity? You know, is it a private sector responsibility and not a governmental responsibility? And it's two schools of thoughts. You know, one is we are, you, you view cybersecurity as bricks in a wall. And every time a corporation does something that makes us more secure, every time a government agency does something that's more secure, it builds up the wall of, of defense. And therefore, there's a real role that the private sector needs to take on their own. We should incentivize them to get really serious about cybersecurity. The other school of thought is, you know, it really is government's responsibility. If God forbid, you know, the uh, Canadians become bell became bellicose and started attacking uh, Plattsburgh, New York, right on the border, certainly you'd have all of DOD's assets coming into Plattsburgh and, and protecting them. Yep. 
So there's a school of thought that says, no, 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 no. This is a national security uh, initiative and a priority. And therefore, the federal government should be funding. They should be providing expertise and they should be providing monitor and response to any type of cyber incident. So we really get, we have not, as a country, we've really not come to one decision as to how we're going to handle cybersecurity. Yeah, I think it's a fascinating thought that you shared about, uh, you know, it, if we looked at, you know, kinetic warfare, the response is, is always that, you know, the federal government absolutely is responsible. But we see so much happening in the cyber warfare landscape where, where it is nation state actors given attribution is always a challenge in any of these cases. But we do know based on sophistication and, and even other intelligence mechanisms that we've had these kinds of issues. Um, and, and how do we draw that line? How do we find out what, what is the right response? How much should the federal government be involved? What is their responsibility? And I think it's a challenge and something that we're going to continue to be working through over the, the next five to 10 years and, and next following administrations do as well.